Hello, good evening. Hola a todos. Muy buenas tardes, noches. ¿Cómo están? How are you today? Hello, teacher. Hi, good. Good That's wonderful. Your day was fine. Good. It's fine. Awesome. Let's yes. look at awesome. So it's already 8 p.m. So let's uh, get started. Um, just in case that um, by any or other reason the recording has stopped, or if you see something that is happening in the recording or in the class regarding uh, to me to talking or maybe if it's stop the video or something, please let me know because I'm afraid that something is happening on my ear. And then. So, um, si ven que por algún motivo queda como parado o está haciendo algo extraño la, la presentación o la grabación, ¿verdad? Que es atípico, déjenmelo saber, por favor, porque creo que algo está sucediendo con el internet y entonces, este, espero que no me dé problemas eh, ahorita, pero si por algún motivo déjenmelo saber en el, en el grupo de, de, de WhatsApp, para Voy a intentar estar lo más pendiente posible. So uh, let's get started to where we stopped yesterday. We stopped on the conversation, right? Yes, no? Yes. Yes, all right. Yes. Um, yes. So regarding to the WH question, because there is an exercise in the virtual platform regarding to the WH question. In the WH questions, or whenever you have uh, some abilities, uh, that one you can use can because type it can be either a verb or it can be in this case an ability too. So it might be taken a as a noun or as a verb. So um, in that case, uh, whenever you have an ability, you need to use can. But that one I will be explaining to you on the WhatsApp group, sending to you a video with the explanation because uh, that it will be something else which is not on the grammar. ¿Qué pasó ayer? Ayer uno de nuestros compañeros nos hacía una pregunta y pues teníamos el verbo type. Type eh, puede ser un verbo, puede ser un noun, dependiendo de dónde esté. Y allí en la, en la parte donde decía how good can, entonces eso era con el um, auxiliar can, ¿verdad? Con la explicación de eso les voy a mandar también una lista y de igual manera les voy a mandar un video eh, durante el weekend para que ustedes puedan tener la explanation. That. So we can be clear on that part because um, exactly on the grammar part is not there uh, or at least I was not able to find it, right? En la parte de la, de la gramática tal cual no, no aparece, así que este, les voy a estar mandando con esa explicación. But in the meantime, uh, we will need to continue and we are going to listen the conversation, right? Uh, this conversation that we stopped here yesterday. So we are going to listen it once again. If you have had questions regarding to the vocabulary, once the recording ends, please let me know. So let's get started. Okay, please let me know if you're able to Unit hear the seven. record. We yes? Yes, yes, teacher. Yes. Yes, teacher. Yes. Yes. Yes, teacher. Um, he had a great time. Page 44, exercise two, conversation. Did you do anything special? Part A, listen and practice. So, what did you do last weekend, Meg? Oh, I had a great time. I went to a karaoke bar and sang with some friends on Saturday. How fun! Did you go to Lucky's? No, we didn't. We went to that new place downtown. How about you? Did you go anywhere? No, I didn't go anywhere all weekend. I just stayed home and studied for today's Spanish test. Our test is today? I forgot about that. Don't worry. You always get an A. All right. Would you like to listen it once again? Yes, yes, teacher. All right. Yes. Yes, yes. Okay. Yes, teacher. Yes, teacher. Please, please, please. Unit 7. We had a great time. Page 44, exercise 2, conversation. 
Did you do anything special? Part A. Listen and practice. So, what did you do last weekend, Meg? Oh, I had a great time. I went to a karaoke bar and sang with some friends on Saturday. How fun! Did you go to Lucky's? No, we didn't. We went to that new place downtown. How about you? Did you go anywhere? No, I didn't go anywhere all weekend. I just stayed home and studied for today's Spanish test. Our test is today? I forgot about that. Don't worry. You always get an A. Okay. So, is that okay like that? Just with this two times? Yes? No? Yes. Yes? yes. Good. All right. So, if it is okay like that, please let me know if you have any questions regarding to the vocabulary or the pronunciation at the moment. What is mean teacher sound? Uh, karaoke bar and sound. The karaoke bar. Let me check. Where uh, is it? Where is it? Uh, downtown. Downtown. No, it's, up. it's up. In Which the one? Mail. 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 Oh, I had a great time. I went to a oh. karaoke bar and sang. 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 Sang is the action that she's doing. Oh, okay. Sam, what is she doing? ¿Qué está haciendo ella? Sing. Sing a yeah. song. <laughs> Singing a song, right? So uh -huh. the past tense of sing is sung. Oh, okay. yes. Thank you. You're Thank welcome. You. So someone else? Is there someone else? Any other question? No, teacher. No. All right. So if there is no question, awesome. No. So if there is no question, we are going to hear a second conversation right before that we can go on the grammar part on this session. So we are going to hear a second conversation. In this second conversation, I'm not going to place the script at the moment, but I would like you to listen to the conversation and answer these questions, right? Did Don enjoy his vacation? Where did he go? And how long was he there, right? So please pay attention to the recording, try to answer the questions, and then we are going to play the record with the script alone, right? So are we clear on what we are going to do? Yes, no? Yes, no? Yes? All right, so let's listen. Where is it? There we go. All right. Teacher, what the mid dawn? 47, exercise um, nine. Sorry, what was that? What does mean Don? Did Don enjoy? Oh, Don is the name of the person. Don. Oh, oh. yes. Okay, yes. Okay. Yeah. So let's get started again. Is there any other questions regarding to the questions, by the way? Everything is fine. Uh huh. No. No questions regarding to the questions? No, no questions. Question. All right. All right. So let me place a the Page 47, exercise nine, conversation. How was your vacation? Part A, listen and practice. Hi, Don. How was your vacation? It was excellent. I went to Hawaii with my cousin. We had a great time. Lucky you. How long were you there? About a week. Fantastic. Was the weather okay? Not really. It was cloudy a lot, but we went surfing every day. The waves were amazing. So what was the best thing about the trip? Well, something incredible happened. All right. So do you would like to listen at once again? Yes? Yes, please. All right. Yes. Awesome. Page 47, exercise nine, conversation. How was your vacation? Part A, listen and practice. Hi, Don. How was your vacation? It was excellent. I went to Hawaii with my cousin. We had a great time. Lucky you. How long were you there? About a week.
Fantastic. Was the weather okay? Not really. It was cloudy a lot, but we went surfing every day. The waves were amazing. So, what was the best thing about the trip? Well, something incredible happened. All right. So, would you like to listen once again, or it's okay like that? It's okay, teacher, for me. All right. So, someone else, the other ones, the rest of the class? Uh huh. You okay, too? What's again? Once again, all right, so let's play that once again. Please. Sure. Please, teacher. <laughs> sure. Page 47, exercise nine, conversation. How was your vacation? Part A, listen and practice. Hi, Don. How was your vacation? It was excellent. I went to Hawaii with my cousin. We had a great time. Lucky you. How long were you there? About a week. Fantastic. Was the weather okay? Not really. It was cloudy a lot, but we went surfing every day. The waves were amazing. So what was the best thing about the trip? Well, something incredible happened. Okay. So let's see. Ready to answer the questions? Yes? Yes. Yes, awesome. So, did Don enjoy his vacation? Yes, no? Yes, very fun. Yes. Yes? yes. Why? Yes. He enjoyed his vacation. All right. Tell me why. He, he uh, surfed. He surfed a lot, uh -huh. right? He He's surfed a lot. He surfed. He surfed a lot. Yes, that's true. Where did he go? Hawaii. Hawaii. He went to Hawaii, right? Hawaii. He went, he went to, to Hawaii. Hawaii. Yes. How long was he there? One about, week. about a week. About a week, week, right? About a week, yes. Kind of a week. So we can say one week. All right, good job. So let's see and let's uh, listen in the dialogue once again, the last time with the script alone. So here we have done now surfing right and this is the last time that we are going to hear the conversation so I read the conversation page 47. and let me know if you have any questions regarding to the vocabulary on the conversation seven exercise nine conversation how was your vacation part a listen and practice hi don how was your vacation it was excellent i went to hawaii with my cousin we had a great time. Lucky you. How long were you there? About a week. Fantastic. Was the weather okay? Not really. It was cloudy a lot, but we went surfing every day. The waves were amazing. So what was the best thing about the trip? Well, something incredible happened. All right. So as I said, right, uh, it might differ from what you have and from what I have here in the script, but don't worry, it's most likely the same, right? So is there any question regarding to the vocabulary? Is there any question regarding to the vocabulary pronunciation? Cloudy, cloudy. Cloudy. Cloudy, cloudy it's for cloudy all right cloudy, cloudy is for example uh whenever there is the sun but there are something that is covering right those ones are the clouds so the sun is not able to shine well right i don't know if you understand me mm. it's in the yes, morning teacher. yes no okay so in it's the morning nublado. exactly Yes, nublado. Oh. Yes, nublado. Cloudy. Yes. Well, where is wavy? Which one? Uh, Celia or Dan? Uh, no, most of. But we went surfing every day. The waves were amazing. The uh, wave... más abajo, ahí, 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 oh. arriba, 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 ahí. 
Es uh -huh. gua, guaves, guaves. Waves. 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 Las olas, right? Waves, las ah. olas. Waves, yes. Las olas. This, right? Uh, what we have here. Yeah. This. Uh -huh. The waves. Yeah. Olas. Ah, olas. olas. Mm -hmm. oh, thank you, teacher. Olas del mar. You're welcome. Someone else? Is there someone else? No? Everything is fine? Fine. Fine. All right. So right, I'm same. gonna place you in groups. So I'm going to give you five minutes. You can practice either this conversation or the first conversation, right? With a partner, either or. You choose which one would you like to practice. And after those five minutes, we are going to come back and get a study. And at the moment, the simple past tense, right? We are gonna be studying that. So please, uh, I don't know. I, I sent it to you yesterday, the presentation. I don't know if you are going to need the, the picture. Yes, teacher, please. Yes, you're going to need the picture. All right, so Sam, let me go ahead and stop sharing. And I'm going to take the picture for each of the slides. So you can have it on the WhatsApp group at the moment. Someone place on a sticker and me it says, all right. Okay. Oh my God, I sent it just to see it one time. Sorry. Let me just... Okay, and I'm going to place you in groups. All right. There we go. Are you able to see the pictures? Yes, no? Yes. I yes. yes. All right. So let me place you in groups at the moment. So uh, the breakup rooms are going to be open in a couple of seconds. Yes, there we go. Right now. So please accept the invitations and join with your partners and start practicing. Quien salió? Hola, hola. Hola, hola. Si no puedo escuchar. No me escucha sí. nadie. Si ¿Sí me escucha a mí. Yes, teacher. I listen. Sí. Raquel, can you hear us? Raquel, you're there? I am alone. <laughs> Seems to be that yes. Um, I'm going to leave the group and I'm going to reassign you. Okay. La voy a reasignar. All right. Just give me one second. Okay. In room. I'm sorry, Rolando. 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 I'm sorry, Rolando
Sorry. Okay. 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 Thank you. You're welcome. To that new place downtown. How about you? Did you go anywhere? No, I didn't go anywhere all weekend. I just stayed home and studied for today's Spanish test. Our Spanish test is today. I forgot all about that. Don't worry. You always get at an A. Una consulta, Verónica. Solo yo escuché como que si en la última, en la última palabra, en la última frase de Mec, la palabra Spanish no se le, no se le escuchaba bien. Mm. No, no se percató de eso. No, eh, cuando la pusieron o cómo? Sí, cuando la pusieron yo casi no la escuchaba, pero no sé si, si era cosa de que yo no la escuchaba bien o... O en la conversación no se escuchaba. No, no, la verdad es que no, no me percaté. <ríe> para okay. que te vean. Okay. ok. Comienzo de nuevo. Sí. So, what did you do last weekend, weekend Meg? Uh, I had a great time. I went to a karaoke bar in some, in some, with some friends on Saturday. That's some... It was excellent. I went to Hawaii with my cousin. We had a great time. Look at you. How long were you there? About a week. Fantastic. Was the weather okay? Not really. It was cloudy most of the time. But we went surfing every day. The waves were amazing. So what was the best thing? Sound like fun. Did you go to Lucas? Uh -huh. eh, no. Ah, no, si era Rick. Ah, tú eras Rick. Ajá, ajá. Ah, ah, pues, este, again, again, the question. Okay. okay. Ah, ah, perdón, oh, sorry. Ah, uh, that sound like fun. Did you go to Lucas? No, we didn't. We went to that new place downtown. How about you? Did you go anywhere? No, I didn't go anywhere all weekend. I just stayed home and studied for today's Spanish test. Our Spanish test is today. I forgot about that. Don't worry, you always get an, an A. Okay. <laughs> you say, how about you? How about you? Uh, how, how do you mean? How about you? Eso sería que hay de ti. Que hay de ti. Oh. Okay. ¿Qué pasó contigo? ¿Qué hiciste tú, verdad? O sea, en la pregunta que le hizo él, eh, él le dijo que quería hecho el fin de semana. Entonces, eh, para no repetir, what do you do on the weekend? Él le dice que hay de ti. How about you? Well, teacher, yes? uh, Lucas is a name of uh, the place? Sí, eh, Lucas es un nombre de un lugar. Mm -hmm. Es como una especie de bar. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yes. Thank you, teacher. You're welcome. So I'm about to close the room. So good job. Okay, we are going to wait until everyone comes back to the main session, right? So we can go ahead and continue. Did you have a great time practicing?
Yes, very nice. Time practicing. All right, that's wonderful that you have a really good time practicing sure. with your friends. Tell me. I have, I have a question. How do you pronunciation? Um, este, um, look, 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 you, look, you, and the conversation, conversation, how was your vacation? Mm -hmm. Look at you. No, what the other other picture. Oh, no, other picture. Yes. Okay. Lucky um, you. Aquí. Esta. La, do, four, four, line four. Yeah. Sí. Talia. Yes. Yes. Uh -huh. Pronunciation. Lock. Lucky you. No. Lucky you. Lucky you. Así. Uh -huh. No es con, como con a. Lock. Lucky you. Lucky you. Lucky. La verdad es de que ese sonido no está muy bien integrado. Déjenme ver cómo es la función fonética, porque hay este, una manera lo que les explicaba anteriormente, ¿verdad? Uh, what we were discussing regarding to the, to the thing schwa, right? So to that one, uh, it's not a sound that sounds like an A. But let me check. Mm. Yes. Look like this. Give me one second. Let me turn to the conversation. And it's like this. Mm -hmm. I wish to have a, I'm going to buy a, what is the name of this thing? I'm going to buy um, a whiteboard, right? Just, I think uh, I'm missing the whiteboards. All right, mm -hmm. uh, there we go. It's like this. I don't know if you are able to see it. Déjame ver que esto es este cuadro de texto cuando uno pone algo, it's weird. There we go. Veamos, no 28, no 36. Are you able to see it? Looky, 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 uh -huh. looky you, uh -huh. looky you. Es una U, es una U, uh -huh. looky you, uh -huh. looky you. Okay, thank you. No, it's una L. You're welcome. Someone else has uh, any other question? You know, about the conversations, the pronunciation. Is there any question? Uh, amazing teacher is correct uh, pronunciation. Amazing. Ima amazing or amazing? Amazing. 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 Yes. That when it is uh, some vowels, they sound like the Spanish vowels, right? For example, that one, amazing right amazing amazing entonces esa suena como una a española de la a normal ¿verdad? amazing mm -hmm. teacher i have a question what is the pronunciation happening happening and happen which one in this in this one or is just the word al final Alfie. Well, sometimes incredible, incredible happen, 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 yeah, the, con la de al final, happen, 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 incredible, 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 incredible. incredible. Okay. yes, okay. incredible, Thanks. you're welcome, thank you, teacher, you're welcome, someone else? Is there um, en Stein, eh, eh, estaba con esa duda si es eh, en la de la, last picture. Yes, the other this picture. One. Oh, no, the no, other one. The other. Yes. Okay. Ay, se me perdió. Stain. Eh, the Rick. No, I didn't go anywhere at the weekend. I just stain. Stained. 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 Stay stained. 
stay. Okay. Stay. Stay. Thank you, teacher. You're welcome. All right. So I don't know if you remember the, uh, well, the pronunciation for the past tense of the verbs in the regular, in the regular verbs. Do you remember the three pronunciations? No. Mm -hmm. Not really. <laughs> or it was not. So, so, teacher. Okay. So, 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 teacher. So. Ah, okay, okay. So I didn't know that. So I will not prepare for that one. So um, let's go ahead and do this. In the pronunciation, right, on the simple past tense, the pronunciation, it was, um, it is just three different pronunciations. We have the D. We have the ed and we have the id, right? So uh, in each of them, there is such as a certain uh, combinations of syllables that you are going to be looking for in order to pronounce them well. So um, what we are going to do is the same, right? So I own you the pronunciation for the s's and I own you and I will own it to you the pronunciation for the d's. So we are going to be practicing the pronunciation for the d's uh, the next coming week because I don't have the material here with me and I need to look for the audio as well. So that's what we are going to do, guys. So in order for you to remember. La otra semana vamos a practicar las pronunciaciones de las D con respecto a los verbos regulares porque no tengo ahorita la, la slide, ¿verdad? Con, con la información y no tengo el audio para que ustedes escuchen uh, más allá de mi persona, ¿verdad? Que no solamente escuchen mi pronunciación, sino que también pues otra con respecto a algún audio de algún libro que pueda conseguir. So uh, that's what we are going to do. We are going to study the pronunciation for the this uh, uh, the next coming week. And as well, I'm gonna send it to you on Saturday or Sunday, what I'm being promised to you on the WhatsApp group, okay? So let's go ahead and do that. Is that fine? Sounds good for you? Thank you. Right. Thank, thank you, you teacher. teacher. All right, so thank you to you, right, as well for being so honest on that part. Is there any other question regarding to the to the conversations that we've been practicing or to the pronunciation or something else before that we go on the grammar course? No teacher. No. All right, so if there is not any other question, so let's uh, get started then. So we are going to be using simple past tense, right? Um, the simple past tense is, a, as it says, is the simple tense in the past for something that happens in the past and a stop in the past. So at some point, right? We are going to have this. We are going to be studying the simple past of the B, which is this one, and as well, just simple past as the simple present tense, right? So we are going to have for the simple past of the B, we are going to have the subject either was or were, which is going to be the form in the past for the verb B, in the statements that are going to be for uh, positive statements, right? Or affirmative statements in this case. So let's remember subject plus was or were, like in the example, they were friends, right? So this one, it will be the negative, right? So in the negative, it's most likely the same. We are going to have the subject plus was plus not or were plus not plus the complement, anything that you would like to have, right? They weren't friends, right? Or they were not friends. It depends on which one you are going to use or which type of the subject you are going to be using, right? So it's going to depend on which one you're going to be using. So you are going to be choosing within was or where. So for the questions, these ones are just no questions, right? So we are going to have was or where, plus the subject, plus the complement, and don't forget the question mark. Um, in this case, we once, once again, this one, right? They were in France, but if we want to convert this one into question, we are going to ask, were they friends, right? And the question mark. We are going to see it just in perspective later on. 
qué estamos hablando acá, ¿verdad? El pasado simple, eh, como su nombre lo dice, es el pasado en simple, ¿verdad? Simplemente pasado. Son para acciones que pasaron en un momento en específico en el pasado y se detuvieron ahí, ya no continuaron. ¿Por qué les hago ver esto? Porque van a haber otros tiempos en los cuales la acción con, pasó en el pasado, pero todavía tiene repercusiones dentro del presente. Entonces, este, este pasado simple solamente pasó en el pasado y se quedó en el pasado y ya no hay más repercusión de él en el presente. ¿verdad? Tenemos el primero que es el pasado del BIP. Que como ustedes lo pueden ver acá, tenemos was or were, que es la forma pasada del verbo be. Entonces, para las afirmativas, nosotros vamos a tener sujeto más lo que es el was o el were, más lo que son los complementos. ¿Gustarían ustedes que fuéramos haciendo un ejemplo aparte de esta imagen para que se comprenda mejor? Yes, yes teacher. Yes, All right. please, teacher. All right. <laughs> Por favor, díganmelo, ¿verdad? Este, no tengan pena. Si ustedes quieren que se hagan más ejemplos, aparte de lo que yo ya pongo en la presentación, díganmelo, no tengan pena. Este, acá estamos para ayudarnos todos, ¿verdad? No solamente es, se trata de, de lo que yo voy a poner, eso va a ser y solamente eso, ¿no? ¿Verdad? Esto es un aprendizaje eh, en comunidad, ¿verdad? Conmutativos. So, nosotros tenemos que, pues, decir de la manera en la que ustedes se sienten más cómodos, porque sí yo voy a saber que sí, sí se está comprendiendo, ¿verdad? Ese, al final ese es el, el, el objetivo, saber que ustedes eh, sí lo comprenden, sí lo pueden utilizar a su realidad, ¿verdad? Y que, pues, en algún momento les va a ser de utilidad cuando ustedes estén hablando con alguien. Entonces, ese siempre, en mi caso, ¿verdad? Al menos a mí, dígame, mire, teacher, haga otro ejemplo, porque eso no lo entendí, ¿verdad? Y no tenga pena, porque todos aprendemos de manera diferente. So, veamos acá, ¿verdad? Estamos con verb be. be. Entonces, um, I'm going to place it here in parentheses, simple pass, right? Simple pass. Which is pretty simple, right? Uh, what we were studying, right? The S, the subject, plus was or where, right? Plus, oops, plus the complement, plus the point at the end, right, of your sentence. We are going to do something special here. Was is going to be he, she, or it. And uh, we're, it's going to be for day, we, you, and I, right? I, oh, I'm sorry, no, 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 I. Here is the only exception where you are going to see it combined, I with the third person singular. Acá, ¿verdad? En el pasado simple es en el único que usted va a haber combinado el pronombre hay de la primera persona con la tercera persona. Solo aquí, ¿verdad? Esto solo es en el pasado simple del verbo be. En los demás, pues, seguimos igual. Es como una excepción. So, vamos a hacer uno con uh, she, un ejemplo. She was my friend. Right? And the point at the end. She was my friend, right? Um, she was my friend. And let's do one with we. We were friends. All right, there we go. We were friends. If you are able to notice every time that you have a plural, a plural pronoun, you are going to have a plural noun, right? So you are going to be having a plural noun. If you have a plural pronoun, you are going to be having a plural noun. En este caso, ¿verdad? Si usted tiene un pronombre 
plural, usted va a tener siempre un nombre plural, ¿verdad? Concordancia en todo. Si tenemos un, nom un pronombre singular, nosotros vamos a tener un pronombre singular también. ¿verdad? So here we have affirmative sentences, right? Is it clear in that part? Are we good? Yes, yes, teacher. Yes. Right. Yes, yes, teacher. Sure yes, then. teacher. Sure thing then. All right, so let me place it here and let's go with negatives, right? As it says, we can have no and not, right? And then the point at the end. Let me just place it here and copy and page. So here we can just add, she was not my friend, we were not friends, right? Here is going to depend on you. If you want to have it uh, on, if you want to have it in that case, oops, sorry. If you want to have it just contracted form or full form, right? The contractions, as we were saying, they are just only most of the time for talking, right? But not for writing informal. So if you are just doing something informal, right? If you are just doing something informal, please feel free to use it. But if you are doing something formal, don't use it, right? So this one, um, the apostrophe, right? The apostrophe has to be straight, not like this one, because this one is just an accent, right? ¿Qué tenemos acá? Nosotros tenemos las negativas. En las negativas, como bien nos decía la regla, vamos a tener sujeto más was not, were not, plus the complement, plus the point at the end. Here we have the questions, ¿verdad? Aquí ten, perdón, las, las oraciones. Usted decide si utiliza contracción o utiliza pues la forma completa. Forma completa si usted va a escribir algo formal, si usted está hablando usa la contracción que es más elegante y si usted está escribiendo solo algo que es para usted una nota puede utilizar la contracción, ¿verdad? Siéntese libre de hacerlo. Destacando acá, ¿verdad? El, lo que es el, el apóstrofe, ¿verdad? Esto se llama apóstrofe. En inglés, el apóstrofe debe de ser recto. Déjenme ver si me lo saca la... No, it doesn't. So, el apóstrofe debe de ser recto. No como este que yo tengo acá. El que yo tengo acá o el que pues me aparece, el que ahorita está apareciendo es un acento como en español. So, recuerden que el apóstrofe debe de ser recto. Ese no va inclinado como está poniendo acá, ¿verdad? Sé que en, dentro de algunas computadoras es al 39. Ustedes pueden intentarlo dentro de las computadoras, ¿verdad? Algunas. Y pues ya si usted está desde un celular, en el celular, pues es diferente. Hay que buscar los símbolos. So, are we good on this one? ¿Estamos bien hasta acá? Yes, yes teacher. Yes, yes, yes teacher. Okay. All right. Maybe, maybe um, my keyboard is uh, next to the letter P. In yours is next to the letter C, the apostrophe. Yes. All right. Yes. So if you are able to get it like that, yes, it's that okay. Este va a depender, ¿verdad? Porque este depende que tenga su, su teclado. Si es un teclado español, sí le va a aparecer ahí. Si es un teclado inglés, oh. eh, no aparece. Aparece, pues, después de la, de la, de donde estemos, tenemos la letra L, cerca del enter. Si usted tiene un, un teclado en inglés. Pero en realidad eh, la combinación para sacarlas es así, no me la puedo. ¿verdad? Sabía que era al 39. Otros cursos me, me comentaron que era esa la combinación. Y eso aparece también en otros libros, ¿verdad? Al 39. Pero a mí no me lo saca por alguna razón. No sé, ¿verdad? Pero sí es recto, ¿verdad? Por favor, recuerden que es recto. No, no así como el mío que les aparece todo así bien extraño. Solamente para que ustedes lo, lo recuerden al momento de escribir también solo pueden hacer así la rayita y pues ya lo tenemos ahí. Así que ahí depende, ¿verdad? Cómo tengan su configuración y su teclado. Pero muchas gracias por el aporte. Usted tiene mucha razón ahí, ¿verdad? So let's do the, the questions. Uh, no sé si hay alguien más que quiera aportar algo con respecto a eso. 
All good. All good. Sí, estamos bien. Teacher, I have a big question. Bueno. Cuando, cuando es pregunta, el verbo irregular. Eh, cuando es pregunta, el verbo en, eh, cambia. Este así. Si es, si es regular, eh, se pone como irregular o como regular. Dame un segundo. Este, vaya, ahí depende, porque en este, en este, ¿verdad? Como este es pasado del B, este es totalmente diferente al pasado simple, ¿verdad? Este es pasado del B. Ya vamos a ver dentro de un par de segunditos el pasado simple y ahí sí, porque allí nosotros utilizamos algo que se llaman auxiliares. Entonces, al momento que usted tiene un auxiliar presente y esto es como una regla, por decirlo así, de, de por vida que usted tiene que recordar cuando usted tenga un auxiliar presente, su verbo tiene que estar en su forma base o en, al, al infinitivo, que se le llama, ¿verdad? Debe de estar al infinitivo. Entonces, este, eso pasa cuando usted tiene un auxiliar. Hay verbos que son considerados auxiliares, pero que en otros tiempos no cambia el verbo. Pero eso lo van a ver más adelante, ¿verdad? Pero ya lo vamos a ver para que usted pueda aclarar esa duda que tiene, Karen. Uh -huh. Ok, thank you, teacher. You are welcome. So, acá, uh, right, we have questions, right? In the questions, pretty simple. You are going to just uh, do a swap, right? What is the swap that we are going to do? Uh, the swap is pretty simple. We are going to change the order of the sentence. So instead of having the pronoun first, we are going to have the verb be at the beginning, right? We are going to have verb be, and don't forget, right, that you are going to be using the question mark as well, right? So let's remember that. So we are going to do that swap only. And by doing that swap, you are going to have your question, right? That it will be your question, right? Was and where. So this one it is, right? If you want to do the answer, yes. She was. Or no, she was not, right? Sorry, let me just go down on my page. All right, uh, this one. And for friends, right? Yes. We are. Oh, no. Yes, we were, I'm sorry. Yes, we were. Or. No, we are not. We were not, right? Or not, we were not. So here we have there the answers, right? Y aquí tenemos las respuestas de igual manera. Déjenme ponérselas en otro color para que se vea un poco la difference. On blue and let's do a blue there right so yes she was or no she was not yes we were or no we were not right so this one it will be with questions and answers right short answers short questions just no questions that's the name can you do a wh question yes you can do a wh question depending on what do you have on demand right So, en este caso de las preguntas, ¿verdad? Lo único que nosotros hacemos es cambiar o invertir el orden. Donde estaba el sujeto, ahora va a estar el verbo be, luego el sujeto y por último el complemento y sin olvidar, ¿verdad? Lo que es el question mark. Estas preguntas son sí o no, por lo tanto, usted espera una respuesta sí o no. Y así sería, ¿verdad? La respuesta sí o no. ¿verdad? que sea lo que le estén preguntando. ¿Puede hacer preguntas con WH questions? Sí, puede hacer preguntas con WH questions dependiendo de lo que usted tenga en demanda, ¿verdad? En este caso en demanda es pues lo que usted desee preguntar o desea hacer con ella, ¿verdad? Are we clear on this part? 
Yes? Yes? All right. Yes, teacher. Thank so, you. Teacher. You are welcome. So, este, ¿verdad? Este es como el primero que nosotros vimos cuando empezamos a estudiar el verbo be. El verbo be tiene su pasado, que es este, ¿verdad? Recordemos que el verbo be se utiliza para emociones, para dar un estado de la persona, ¿verdad? El verbo nos dice estados, ¿verdad? Emociones, estados, sentimientos, etcétera. Para eso ocupamos nosotros el verbo be. Este verbo be es exclusivo para ello, ya sea en presente o en futuro. Perdón, en presente o en pasado. Ya los otros verbos se llaman verbos de acción. ¿Por qué verbos de acción? Porque ellos hacen algo, ¿verdad? Ya sea correr, caminar, estudiar, leer, etc. Eso ya es un verbo de acción. El verbo be recuerde para estados, emociones, sentimientos, etc. ¿Verdad? Just clarifying that. Let's move on on the other part, which is going to be action verbs. Nos vamos a mover a la otra parte que son los verbos de acción, ¿verdad? En esta parte de los verbos de acción, perdón, me voy a abrir otro documento. En esta parte de los verbos de acción, we are going to have an auxiliary, right? Vamos a tener nosotros un auxiliar. Está bien chiquito. And let's see. 36. We are going to have an auxiliary, right? Which is the auxiliary? The auxiliary is going to be verb do, but in past, which is going to be fit, right? So this one is the one that we are going to be using. And this one is going to be simple, simple past tense, right? And this simple past tense, as we said, we are going to have an auxiliary and we are going to have action verbs, right? Action verbs. We are not going to have states anymore, right? ¿Qué es lo que va a pasar con este pasado simple? En el pasado simple, nosotros vamos a utilizar algo que se llama verbo auxiliar. Este verbo auxiliar va a ser el verbo do en su estado infinitivo pero en su forma pasada, que va a ser did. Y esto nos va a servir para verbos de acción. Ahora bien, ¿con quién se combina did? Did va con todos los pronombres personales, ¿verdad? Did. With all the personal pronouns. Este va con todos los pronombres personales, ¿verdad? So we are not going to have any type of change on the they did, right? As auxiliary, no change, right? Como auxiliar, usted no va a tener ningún cambio en el did, va con todos los pronombres personales. But there's something that you need to remember. In past, there are two types, right? Of verbs. Right, so in past we have two types of verbs. We have one that is call, right? One which is call in this case, uh, regular verbs and irregular verbs. So we are going to have two types of verbs, regulars and irregulars, right? Regular verbs, we add, right, ed, depending on the rule, right? We add ed. Irregular verbs change on pronunciation and writer form. Muy bien, ¿qué tenemos acá? Nosotros en el pasado vamos a tener dos tipos de verbos. Verbos regulares y verbos irregulares. Los verbos regulares nosotros les agregamos ed o depende cómo sea el verbo, así va a ir cambiando. Los verbos irregulares nosotros les vamos a cambiar. Cambian tanto en su pronunciación como en su forma escrita. ¿verdad? Este, estos, you need to learn them by heart. Esos ustedes se los tienen que aprender de memoria. 
¿verdad? There is no any other way to identify them. No hay otra manera de identificarlos, ¿verdad? Easy that I might know. Que yo recuerde otra manera más fácil, no la hay, ¿verdad? Difícil, sí, pero no imposible. So we can learn them. So uh, that one, I wish that you can remember the rules for the simple present tense in the third person singular. ¿Recuerdan ustedes las reglas del presente simple de la tercera persona en singular? Las que vimos uh, en tierra ayer, parece. Sí, las que se le agregaba es. Ajá, que se le agregaba S, S. Y depende de, de cómo, de, de cómo termina. Ajá. De cómo termina el verbo, qué era lo que se le agregaba, lo que no se le agregaba. ¿Ustedes lo recuerdan? Sí. Yes. Pues déjenme decir yes. que esas mismas reglas yes. se aplican a los verbos regulares con la única diferencia que en este caso usted lo que va a hacer es agregar ya sea ED, D o IED. ¿Verdad? Entonces eso es lo único que cambia. Si usted se aprende las reglas del presente simple, ya tiene ganadas las del pasado, porque es lo mismito, ¿verdad? Solamente que hay que identificar cuál es regular y cuál es irregular. So let's see, right? Let's continue. Are we clear on this part? Are we clear on this part? Yes? Yes, thumbs up. Yes, thank you. Yeah. All right, so if we are clear on this part, let's go on regular sentences, which are going to be the first ones affirmative, right? Same story. We are going to have the subject, right? Do you prefer colors? Le gusta más en colores? Sí. Yes. Yes, all right. Yes. So you are visual. All right, so let's see. We are going to have subject, right? Plus, in this case, uh, we are going to have now an action verb. In the past, right? Plus your complement, plus the point, right? And here I forget this. The action bear in the past plus the complement. In that case, right? In este caso, right? So you can have any of any of any of your personal pronouns. He and you, vamos a poner, right? Okay. All right. He sent all the last night. You sent all last night. So acá, verdad, el verbo no le va a cambiar, ya sea que usted tenga tercera persona o en este caso primera persona, verdad. El verbo siempre va a mantener su estructura en el pasado. Este verbo en específico, déjenme ponérselos acá, es sing, right? Es el verbo sing. Es un verbo irregular. En su forma pasada es sang. So you can have any personal pronoun and the verb will keep the same, right? So you are not going to change it. It's just only the idea and this thing happened in the past, right? Solamente es la idea, ¿verdad? Acá, eh, lo que pasó, que él cantó, pues ya pasó, ya cantó y fue toda la noche, la última noche, ¿verdad? La noche de ayer, podríamos decirlo. Entonces, el verbo, ya sea tercera o primera persona, se mantiene el mismo en pasado, ¿verdad? Solamente que hay que buscar su forma, si en este caso es como sync, que es un verbo irregular. Estamos bien hasta ahí. Sí. Yes, yes, muy bien. Yes, yes. Muy bien. Eh, en este último minuto voy a terminar la idea con las negaciones para que ustedes lo tengan. Vamos a ver acá. Blows out did más el auxiliar did plus not plus the action verb in base form. Right. Uy, sorry. Plus the action bear in base form. I'm gonna just. Um, ya son las nueve, chicos. Lo, ¿Están de acuerdo si lo terminamos? 
Yes, teacher. Yes. Yes, teacher. Okay. yes, teacher. I don't have a problem. All right. So let's finish with this one. And for the ones that uh, as well, right? Sorry for the ones that they need to go. If you have something to do, right, feel free to just go. We are going to finish this. So let me take uh, the same example, right? The same example. Here we are going to have did not, or in this case, a didn't, right? Didn't. We are going to have didn't in just the past form. And here, yes, the verb is going to be in the base form, right? So here's the same story in the present simple, right? In the simple present tense, it's the same story. If you already have the auxiliary, which is telling to you that you are in past, you don't have the necessity to place your bear in the past because you already have the auxiliary, which is telling to you what you are talking about or in which tense you are talking about. So here it's going to depend on you. What do you have, right? So acá podemos ver que si usted tiene en presencia del auxiliar, ¿verdad? Su verbo va a regresar a estar en forma base o lo que es en infinitivo, ¿verdad? Ahí como usted lo quiera llamar, forma base o infinitivo. Es lo mismo que pasa en el presente simple. Si usted ya tiene el auxiliar, ya sea tú, bueno, en el caso de das, que se ve más claramente en das, si usted ya tiene das, no tiene por qué decirle, mira, yo estoy hablando de esto, ¿verdad? Ya le está diciendo, yo estoy hablando en pasado. Caso contrario a la afirmativa que acá sí necesitamos decirle esto es en pasado, ¿verdad? A pesar de que tengamos un ya, un time marker ahí, que es este. Este es el time marker, ¿verdad? Es un time marker. There we go. Entonces acá tenemos... Eh, pues lo que son oraciones afirmativas y las negativas y la próxima semana seguimos con las negaciones y la práctica ya del pasado, ¿verdad? Antes de que nos vayamos, ¿tienen ustedes alguna pregunta, duda, comentario con respecto a esto? No. Teacher, solo, solo en las preguntas se mantiene el auxiliar se mantiene el verbo en, en su estado normal, ¿verdad? Solamente cuando usted tiene presencia de auxiliar, el verbo se mantiene en su forma base, sí, en su estado normal. Y en las únicas que nosotros tenemos presencia de auxiliar son en las negaciones y en las preguntas, ¿verdad? Ahí tenemos presencia de auxiliar, negaciones y preguntas. All right. Is there Thank any you, question? You are more than welcome. Always here to help you. So is there any other question regarding to this? Comment before that we go? No? No teacher. All no fine? teacher. All right, so if everything is Thank fine, you. I hope it's a pleasure. I hope you have a wonderful weekend. We will see us on Monday. Please take care and stay safe. Have a good night. Go and eat if you haven't done it. It was a pleasure to be with you. And any question, hit me up on WhatsApp, right? So take care. Have a good night and bon weekend. Bye-bye. Good night. Bye. 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 Bye.